Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Okay, welcome to the latest video. And in this video, what I'm gonna do is answer a question that I've literally just received on my, on my email this morning about doing what I would call a desktop DOE. So that's what we're going to do today. I've never, I don't think I've made a video about this subject before. Um, and it, it, the question came in, it's just a great opportunity to show you how to do what I would call a desktop DOE. Now normally with a designed experiment, we would have a piece of equipment. You know, I, I've, often, I've often got one of these look in the, in the uh, the class and this is a piece of equipment we've got adjustments physical adjustments where's the elastic position where's the cup position where's the pin position how far do you pull the thing back and on a machine you'd have these speeds feeds temperatures etc so normally we'd have real a real process making real products and then we physically got to measure the parts so maybe we're measuring the diameter of the item as we mold it but in a desktop DOE, what you've basically got is a calculation and you're trying to understand the maths that's in the calculation. Now, the, the, the little question that I've been sent is about calculating the energy efficiency of a house given certain building materials. So let me just uh, look at the, uh, the sheet here. Let me show you what we've got, look. Um, you can see that we've got three variables they've sent me it's external walls 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5 etc is the settings then you've got something to do with the roof lamination and they've gone 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 0 0.3 and then finally the glazing lamination and again different thicknesses there so let me just write those three on the board so we've got, I'll call it wall thickness. You've got roof lamination. And you've got glazing glass lamination. Okay, so they're the, they're the three inputs. So, you know, what are we doing? Well, we're going to do a, I, I would start off with a, a two to the three linear full factorial with this all right so that's what we're going to do but it's a calculation it's a it's a desktop doe all right and then the measurements let's have a look the heating need the cooling need so there's a couple of outputs um, i'm just going to keep it to two you can see there's there's four data columns um, on there so there's, there's one that says heating need, there's one that says cooling need, all right? So, yeah then, if you think about this logically, what are we gonna have? Well, what we're gonna have is some kind of calculation that feeds into this result. So whatever number we put in the box here, in an Excel spreadsheet, so you set up your Excel spreadsheet, you put a formula in for taking these three variables and calculating the heating need. And then you put a formula in for moving these three variables and calculating the cooling need. Okay, so you're going to have basically a simple table. It's going to have eight combinations in it. It's going to have three columns. Wall thickness, roof lamp, glass lamp, yeah, so like that. And then at the end here, we'll just have one column for the heating need, 
one column for the cooling need. Only one column because it's a calculation. So as I put numbers in here, so if I put 0.2 in here, 0.5 in here, and 1.8 in there, a formula will calculate these two. And it'll say, oh, we're gonna get 36.9 here, and 10.3 there. And you fill out the next one. Now this is going to be in the two to the three DOE pattern. So of course the first column will be 50% of the settings, the first four will be 50% at low, the next four will be at the high, then the pattern will follow through as a full factorial would. You will get eight results and then what we can do is we can create a regression model for that and a regression model for that and then of course we can ask the computer can we hit this cooling need and this heating need both at the same time and so we can hit a sweet spot for a house design so that it's it's cool in the summer and it's warm in the winter and we have the best um, design of the house in terms of its um, insulation. Of course the other thing is there might be money associated with there might be money associated with that, money associated with that, money associated with that. So the other thing you could do, you could add a third column of data on the end here for this, if you choose this to build a house, what's the cost? You could put the money here. So the other thing you would have then is a third regression model and then you can ask the computer to just cost cost £10,000 as a maximum but can you hit this cooling need and this warming need and you're doing this you're doing this on a desktop you're not having to build houses you're doing it from the calculation so I don't know what the calculation might be you got factor A here factor B factor C let's say it was A A times B divided by C that's, let's say that's the formula just because you can write the formula down and you can understand the formula and the way that these three variables work together doesn't mean that you could just look at these three and you could pick the correct cost to hit the correct values. I used to think that, but even the simplest formula is beyond our ability to calculate in our head. Whereas if you create a regression model by doing a desktop DOE, just eight combinations, four at the high, four at the low. In this column there will be four at the high, four at the low. In this column there will be four at the high, four at the low. If you do that and create a desktop model, you can then ask the models to hit any particular target. And that is the way that I would do a desktop DOE. It's just a calculation through an Excel spreadsheet. The formulas here could be very complicated. You know, you could be talking about squared terms and square roots here and, you know, all, all, sorts, of, all sorts of different formulae that you could just plug into your desktop DOE that, that are impossible to understand just by looking at them. But once you have a regression model, the regression model gives you the ability to ask that question. How do I hit this target? How do I hit this target and keep this cost down? And all that is possible with what's known as a desktop DOE. So I have the data there. You can see it here, look, on the spreadsheet. It's not there as a formula. Uh, and I'm not sure what combinations the gentleman has chosen. So I don't know if he's... I think, has he done 27 rows? I think he might have done them. Yes, he's done them as, he's actually done it as um, three by three full factorial. So I can analyze this data um, just as a, um, not a linear model, which I would do eight, but as a quadratic model because he's given me 27 data points. I'm going to analyze this for him 
and then I'm going to send it back to him. But it's just a great example of how to do a desktop DOE to understand a complicated piece of maths that otherwise you would sit there. And you could do this with CAD, by the way. You know, you have your computer-aided design. And I know that computer-aided design understands all the maths, but it doesn't mean you can just look at the design and go, they're the three settings that I need to choose and everything will be right. What you should do is use DOE with your CAD, take the data out of CAD into a, into a designed experiment, and then use it to optimize your CAD design. It's a desktop DOE. It'll take you literally 10, 15 minutes to just generate eight data points to get models that'll help you to save hours and hours of activity. There is a desktop DOE.